Reef Builders, how's it going out there? Evan Montgomery coming at you tonight. Uh, it's been another snowy Colorado day. I've been stuck inside quite a bit today, um, cleaning up a few things on the tank, moving some stuff around, and I think it's looking pretty good. So I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of show it off to you guys, do a bit of a tank tour here. Uh, I know everybody loves a good tank tour. Um, hopefully it's light enough in here right now. I actually waited to do this until it got dark outside uh, because this video is not about me. It's about the tank and the whole thing is so much easier to show off and looks a lot better when there's not a lot of reflections and this room has quite a few windows around here. So a little background on the tank. Um, a lot of the livestock in here, a lot of the fish and a lot of the bigger corals that I have had for a while um, were actually originally in a 72 gallon tank that I had set up for years, four or five years anyway, in its most recent iteration. Um, and then I picked this tank up in San Diego at Macna and it kind of sat in my garage for a little bit too long. Uh, but I finally got it going a couple years ago. This was up at another house. I had to move about six months ago. So this tank was up for just over a year before I actually had to move. Um, and then it just hit its six month anniversary last month. Um, so it's a young tank, but it's a uh, like I said, got a lot of established corals and colonies in there that I've had for quite a while, although they did have to get broken down a little bit uh, when I moved. So the tank itself is a 90 gallon standard dimension rimless tank uh, made by CAD lights. And I also have a frag tank made by JBJ plumbed in. I kind of did a funky plumbing job it's actually meant to just have like a, a sump in the back of the tank and not be plumbed. Um, but I uh, got one that this one was drilled when I got it. So a little bit of uh, plumbing and it's all tied in. So it's all the same water here. We'll come back and look at the frag tank in just a minute. Um, I guess let's start with the fish over here in the main display. Now, something that's always kind of been a pet peeve of mine, and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I don't think I'm scaring my fish too badly, but when I'm sitting back on the couch enjoying the tank, they're all right out front and center where I can enjoy them. As soon as I come up and stand in front of the tank, and it's even worse if I have somebody else over here and there's two of us, um, they're all quite a bit skittish, but um, let's see, we've got the lawnmower, or uh, not the lawnmower, the Starry Blenny behind the Vortec pump there. I've got an orange back fairy wrasse, which is absolutely one of my favorite fish. Got the standard yellow tang, of course. I have one lonely old pajama cardinal. All of his friends and mates have moved on over the years, but he's still here with me. Who else is in here? Oh, I've got some cool long fin clownfish from Sea and Reef Aquaculture. They actually have only been in here for a couple months. I had one of my old clownfish that I've had for, it had been 13 or 14 years uh, by the time it actually jumped. So the day that that happened, these guys got an upgrade from the Nano they were in into the, the full-blown reef display here. Let's see who else is hiding. I see my Coral Angel Beauty Fish, or uh, Coral Beauty Angel Fish. Got that backwards there. Um, let's see, not, not fish, but I've got a couple Coral Banded Shrimp hiding in there. Let's see, I know there's a few more. There's a Flame Hawkfish hiding somewhere in here and a Mandarin hiding in here somewhere. The only other one that I have uh, in this system, I have a basket over here with the Colorado Sunburst and Enemy, and I have a standard uh, Ocellaris clownfish hosting in there. Let's see, let's talk about some corals. Um, I'll start with some that I've had for a really long time. The purple stylo obviously grows very fast. This was a third of that size six months ago. And now, as you can see, it's taking up quite a bit of space in here. I'm gonna have to do something. I really don't want it to touch the back glass. So it's not gonna be too much longer before I have to get in there and, and do something. Um, let's see, the red um, Montipora digitata is one that I've had for a long time and I've almost lost so many times. It's kind of one of my favorites now because I've kind of saved it so many times. Um, I've got kind of a sad looking piece of one of my favorite green Montiporas. We've got a really nice chunk of this down at the studio. Um, so this has actually been over in the frag tank for a long time. There was a bird's nest in this spot. Um, and then as those tend to do, it kind of all died. It was actually this bird's nest here. There was a little chunk of it that, that made it. So I clipped that off and glued it back in there and it'll be back. 
got the Space Invader Pectinia. That's also one that I've saved from a vanishingly small piece of flesh that was still left on there. So that's one of my favorites, just this one in particular, because I grew it from, you know, practically nothing left. Got the pipe organ there. I've got a nice Duncan here that I grew from two heads only a couple years ago. Got that from one of my local buddies. Got a tongue coral. Got uh, some a random uh, Monty poker star, something like that. Uh, let's see, some torts, some chalices, a can. Got this awesome clam. Picked that up a couple years ago, and it's about tripled in size. Um, let's see, a couple random frags I've acquired over, uh, you know, recently. Um, this one's one of my favorites here. I think I got that at Magna in Washington, D.C. That is a le um, Leptostrea. Let's see. the Oh, and the Langside cap right there above the clam. This piece wasn't looking so hot for a while. Um, it's supposed to have that nice purple rim on it, like you can kind of see it's starting to grow right there. Um, it didn't have that for a long time, but it's really starting to pop. And yes, I know I've got quite a few Aptasia in here. Um, that's, a, that's something I've been battling my entire career as a reef keeper. Uh, for a long time, I had a copper band butterfly fish, uh, but he passed away about nine months ago when I was out of town and I have had just terrible luck uh, with the Aptasia ever since. Um, oh, what else is a nice, uh, this, this Dallas Acro here is pretty sweet. Uh, there's not too many of those over here. I know they're more common in Australia. Um, it's similar to right in front of it is the um, Green Slimer, the Yongi Eye. Um, I, it's very similar to that. It has a little bit more blue on the base of it. Let's see, um, some nice acros. I'm not sure what that is. Some stag. Um, this, I believe, is a Millie. It wasn't sold. Uh, the guy that sold it wasn't sure. But I believe it's a Millie, just based on the polyp extension. Uh, I've got a tort that I've, uh, you know, like several corals in here, had almost die off on me many times and then comes back. i um, got a Fungia plate down here. Elegance coral. Switch sides here. A uh, little chunk of a red cap coming out. Let's see, got some moon corals. Got that elegance there. Nice side view. I really do enjoy the side view. I try to keep the sides of my tank just as clean as the front so I can swing around and look at it from this angle. Um, got a pretty sweet scully right there. Uh, above it, this is actually one of my favorites. That is a stylus and yellow. That's the supreme stylus and yellow from Top Shelf Aquatics. And the tub stellata here is doing very well. That was just a couple little nubs on the on the tile there not too long ago, and that's coming out real well. Um, some random zoanthids. There's a lot of random zoanthids and pallies and stuff like that throughout this whole system. Um, some green star polyps back there that I'm going to have to start uh, doing something about one of these days. Um, let's see. What else? What else is really cool? Let's, uh, let me kill the flow in the frag tank here. I don't clean the glass on this tank nearly as fastidiously as I do on the other tank. Um, so I usually, if I want to look at the corals in here, I just kill the flow. Um, let's see, you saw the clownfish hosting in the anemone. That's kind of the uh, main attraction in this tank. But I've kind of just got a, an assortment and collection of uh, random things I've gotten from other hobbyists. Um, picked up at shows that I got a deal on and I just couldn't say no, but then never really found the you know perfect spot for it in the display. Uh, but I've got a cool Nephthia there. Let me get a camera filter, actually. That might make this a little bit better. All right, yeah, the, the tank gets bluer and bluer as the night goes on. And it's uh, early enough I thought I might not need the filter, but that does seem like it helps quite a bit. Um, let's see what's cool in here. I've got a cool uh, Gorgonian that I really like. I grow, grew that from, like, two polyps. Um, I've got a cool Alveopora. That's one of my current favorites in here. It seems like it's doing really well. Um, a pretty sad-looking uh, Ganyapora right next to it. We don't need to talk about that. And a uh, Ostera, I guess, worldwide yellow tip acro there that's kind of getting uh, molested by the, uh, what's that called, Galaxia. Got a few random little chunks glued on the back, some moons, some uh, acros. Got a sad Duncan back there in the corner. A couple of the regular bubble tip anemones, not the sunburst, here in these cups. Um, I've got a strain of hammer that I picked up from a lady up here locally that was tearing her tank down. 
got some cool leathers. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I picked that up at Reefstock from uh, Worldwide Corals. It's uh, some crazy favia, but I thought they were zooanthids at first. Uh, chalice, got some rainbow monty tucked away down in there. Cool cyphastria. I know, a bunch of uh, cyanobacteria. This, I think, is maybe just another Worldwide yellow tip. But that piece has been looking super hot lately. Polyp extension and colors. It's just probably one of my favorite corals in the whole system right now. Um, got some Pavona. Got some funky, some more chalices. Branching Cyphastria right there. Got a Blasto hanging out in the shade. Um, got a rack of uh, Micro Lords. Everybody's favorite Acans. Um, some snake polyps down there, a big, massive tangle of a couple different kinds of clove polyps, some goniastrias, oh, all kinds of good stuff in here. Let's see, cool elk corn I picked up recently. We've got some, uh, some bird's nests I've rescued out of other hobbyists' tanks around here. Um, some Xenia that I need to do something about. There was actually a really nice tort right there. And then the Xenia got a little bit too invasive for it. But, um, I guess that's about it for the frag tank. Just a kind of a random assortment. I think we went over... Oh, this is another one of my favorite corals here, too, is the, uh... That green one on the back is the, I'm trying to think this, the slime ball, it's an anacropora. Um, that one's doing really well for me too. Um, that was one for a long time. It was just sitting there doing nothing, looking pretty pale. And uh, now it's blowing up right in front of my face. So I always enjoy seeing that. Oh, and then this big one down here, I guess some of you guys might've noticed that I didn't mention. Uh, that is the poker, uh, not poker star, Jedi mind trick, uh, Monty. Something I think a lot of people don't think to do if they have a standard aquarium is to turn off all the pumps in the flow and look at the corals from the top down. You know, especially if you have an SPS tank like this, it is a whole nother world when you, uh, when you look from the top down. I do this fairly often. You know, you have to turn off all the right pumps and remember to turn off your protein skimmer so that that doesn't overflow. Um, but yeah, coming up on the step stool here and looking top down gives you a whole new perspective on things. I know some of you have got to be wondering about, you know, I mentioned my clownfish that jumped out earlier. Um, there was actually a screen top on the tank at the time. I normally always keep a screen top on. It's only if I'm here really enjoying the tank or trying to show it off on a video like this that I'll take the screen top off and set it to the side because I, you know, I did a little uh, DIY on the screen top trying to make a feeding hole and whatnot. And it's just not exactly the prettiest thing on the tank. So when I'm showing the tank off to people, I always, uh, remove the screen and then that helps get these nice views like that also where you can see the corals top down. The clownfish actually when it jumped, jumped inside the radion mounting bracket right here. I shoved some plastic in there so that that can't happen again. Um, but I couldn't believe it. Even with the screen top on the tank, the clownfish still managed to find a way to jump out. Um, I think there is, I think you can remove this bracket since it's a rimless tank, that bracket on there, the spacer, is uh, for a tank with a rim on it. Um, I just haven't gotten around to doing that. It was easier to just shove a piece of plastic in there for the time being and prevent these uh, long fin clowns from doing the same thing. Yeah, I just uh, turned all the pumps back on, got the return pump flowing again, got the skimmer flowing again. Um, let's go hop down to the sump and see what makes this tank tick. Let's see. The water drains down from the overflow um, right there. 
comes down into the Clarisy filter roll, which I'm still loving. I did the video about that, gosh, probably a year and a half ago now or something like that. And I had just nonstop, you know, I changed the filter roll occasionally, but absolutely no issues with that. It's probably about time for me to actually take the whole thing apart over to the sink and kind of clean it out a little bit. Um, even when I moved, I didn't take the whole thing apart. I just kind of hosed, hosed it down a little bit. Uh, I've got the NIOS Quantum 160, which has just been a beast of a skimmer for me. Um, I think it's perfectly sized for a system like this with the bio load that I have. Um, you know, I just fired it back up. So the foam head's kind of starting to build itself back up. But uh, I mean, what you're seeing in there is the skim eight from, I emptied that earlier this afternoon. So that's just a few hours worth sitting there. And uh, it's quite silent compared to my old uh, ASM G3 that I was used to for a really long time. Um, so I'm very happy with the skimmer. It's flowing just a little bit right now. It's kind of uh, just thrown in there haphazardly, but I've got a uh, BRS mini, carbon reactor there. Um, I don't run carbon all that often, but oh, once a month, every six weeks or something like that, I like to put some carbon in there and run it for a few days. Let's see, I've got this uh, three head dosing pump up here, the Bubble Magus. The only thing that's doing right now is adding a tiny bit of magnesium. Um, I have the other channels shut down because I used to use that for all of my dosing. And then I got a calcium reactor, I'll show you. Um, so that, uh, dosing pump back there is only for magnesium at the moment. We've got the Tunzi auto top off uh, controller back there with the float switches down here in the sump. The thermometer obviously tucked back there. Um, I've got a clear water scrubber, which is a pretty cool, uh, I don't know, a relatively new invention. Um, and it's getting pretty thick with the, with the hair algae down in there and the turf algae. So it's going to be on my list in the next couple of days to actually pull that out and uh, take that over the sink and clean it out. Uh, got some heaters, obviously. You need heaters. Got two of those. And each of those I actually have plugged in to the... Uh, what's it? The Cobalt Neostat, I guess is what it was called. It's not really super on the market anymore. I guess you can still find them occasionally, but I really like those controllers uh, and the probes for those go in over here, zip tied so that they don't fall out. Um, let's see, this filter bag, you might be wondering what that's for. That's actually just around the intake line for the calcium reactor. So that will help keep micro bubbles and any sort of sediment detritus out of the calcium reactor got the M1 return pump down here. Been rocking for many years, never had an issue with that. Um, I guess that's about it for the equipment. Got some uh, under kitchen lights mounted up under here so you can see everything. Those are actually only at about 15 or 20 percent right now, so if I really want to, I can make it nice and bright down here. But uh, back up a little bit here, kind of give you the overview. You know, it looks like there's a lot going on. I know my cable management leaves a lot to be desired. Um, I just find it frustrating though, every time, you know, especially like with something like a skimmer or a return pump, you know, you spend all the time zip tying and making the cables look just right. And then a couple months down the road, you have to take it out to clean it and you just disrupt the whole thing. And I don't know, I've never been super great at the whole cable management thing. I wish there was a way to make the cables the exact length that you need. That would help so much. Um, equipment wise up top, I've got one, two, three MP40s. I've got the Gen 4 XR30 Pros over the display. And then over the frag tank, I've got one of the XR15 Gen 3s. It's a bit on the old side, but it gets the job done. And I actually, even though this is only about a 10 gallon tank, I have an MP40 on here as well. Uh, it's just turned down a little bit. It's just what I happen to have. So uh, why not use what you have instead of going out and buying something new? Um, all the controls for everything are down in this cabinet under the frag tank here. I've got the power center, uh, some digital timers, um, ballasts, top off. Reservoirs are under here, or not top off, sorry, uh, the magnesium and alkalinity calcium, if I had those turned on. Those reservoirs are down here. Vortec controllers, all that good stuff. Um, let's see, this calcium reactor. Did a video about this recently. Most of you guys probably saw the Destaco, uh, what's it, C2 uh, cal calcium reactor here. Um, it's a European product, but it works great on this side of the pond as well. Um, 
And that actually has just been keeping the alkalinity right where it needs to be. Very little in the way of adjustments to that. The only reason I've had to really adjust the calcium reactor is because I've had some adjustments made on the calc washer, and uh, that kind of has changed how much uh, uh, calcium I need to be putting in from other means. And now as far as where I get my water, um, I have a 100 gallon per day RO unit over in the laundry room with a line actually plumbed through the wall back behind all these shelves and stuff. And that all comes over into this 30, 32 gallon brute trash can sitting next to the tank. And that is, there's a float valve in there to keep the, keep the floors dry in case I go to bed and forget. Um, but that feeds the calc washer reactor as well as the Tunesy top-off system. So that supplies all of my uh, makeup top-off water, and I don't have to lift a bucket to get it over here. It's just all plumbed through the wall. Uh, I just flip a valve, and a couple hours later, I'm good to go for a while. Um, the only time I ever have to move a bucket is when I'm doing a water change. I like to siphon a lot of detritus and stuff like that from, you know, from the sump or from the overflow box and stuff like that. So I usually will... Uh, just siphon into a bucket and and carry it over to the toilet but i only do a water change you know once a month so i i can carry four or five buckets guess uh let me go ahead and show you this is kind of a, a fish room down here so i've got my little table over here where i do my tests that's super important um keep all that handy and so you know it's better to have it out sitting on a table than over in a closet somewhere where you're never going to pull them out it's nice to have all that real handy here uh, i've got uh the red sea blue bucket that's my usual go-to salt um keeps the alkalinity a little bit lower than the purple uh is it the purple bucket that has the higher alkalinity anyway i like the red sea blue bucket salt uh, I've got a freshwater tank sitting here this is actually one of my oldest tanks i've got a really old silver dollar in there with a few uh younger friends that I got for him along the, along the way. Um, but this 35 gallon flatback hex is my oldest tank that I've had. I had a five gallon tank before that, that I have no idea what happened to that along the way. Um, but there's not too much going on in here. I've got the original colony of reef builders mollies in here. Uh, this is where they all came from originally. Uh, I've got a couple black tetras, black skirt tetras, and some quarry cats in here. And that is about it. I really need to go shopping for some more fish as soon as I can. Um, I've got a saltwater molly tank over here in the corner. Um, so this is really where the mollies come from that we uh, have at the Reef Builders Studio, or at least the white and silver ones. Um, they, they're getting a little hungry, but you can see by the salt creep there that this is the saltwater uh, salt water molly tank. I think I am going to actually bring the salinity back down slowly to kill off some of the algae and stuff on, the, on this live rock, and then give it a month or two, and then maybe bring the salinity back up. And something I actually just set up recently over here uh, next to my Nano is, uh, or next to the frag tank, is another little Nano. Uh, this is currently running fresh water. I've got uh, two mollies in there kind of just to get the cycle going. And then they're all hiding in the, in the cave right there. But I've got some black neon tetras that I just pulled out of my other tank for now. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with this tank eventually. Um... I, you know, it's got a decent light on here, this Kessel, so I could do some plants for sure. Um, I don't know. Part of me wants to just get, like, a group of tiger barbs and throw them in there and call it a day, because that's, that's one of my favorite old-school freshwater fish, so I'm not sure. Just just a lot of little projects going on around here. Uh, but this is obviously the main, main showcase tank where most of my uh, time is spent. Alrighty, guys. Uh, that's kind of the current state of my home tank right now. Hope you enjoyed this little mini update. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about. Um, I talked about what fish I have, what corals I have. Gave you a peek down in the sump to show you how the whole thing ticks. Um, I don't know. Post if you guys have any questions coming up. You know, if this, uh, if you want to know anything about anything, really. You know, if you have any questions about the tank, just post them in uh, in the comments down below. Um, you know, obviously like the channel, subscribe, do all that good stuff. But um, I'm, I'm going to come back to you guys with uh, another update, hopefully before too long, maybe trying to make this an every six months type of thing. And you can really see the progress, what's changed, you know, new additions, what I decided I didn't want anymore, um, anything like that. So, yeah, like I said, until uh, until next time, make sure you hit that subscribe button, um, like Reef Builders, and I will talk to you on the next one. Later.